All right, we'll get started with number two. Uh, given y equals e to the negative x, and that the differential equation is 3y prime plus 4y equals e to the negative x. So again, what we're trying to prove is that this function, uh, as long as it's derivative, is a solution to this equation, meaning that if we took the derivative of this equation and plugged it in for y prime, that this equation would be solved. Um, and it might also include plugging in y as e to the negative x. So first, let's take the derivative. y prime equals negative e to the negative x. Okay, No problem there. Uh, so we're going to take this and substitute it for y prime, see what happens. 3 times negative e to the negative x plus 4y equals e to the negative x. It doesn't seem to be working out, uh, but if you'll notice, like there's a lot of e to the negative x's involved, so it might be best for us to just go ahead and make that substitution. Okay. Um, I feel like I wrote something. Ah. Yeah, okay, so it's 3 times negative e to the negative x, so it's negative 3e to the negative x plus 4e to the negative x equals e to the negative x, and so 4e to the negative x minus 3e to the negative x would be e to the negative x, so check. I'm just verifying that it's a solution. Um, okay, so 13 through 16, we're trying to show whether each of these, uh, 13 through 16, is a solution to why you see a parentheses 4 there? I'll explain that in just a second. If it's a solution to this differential equation. Just writing this 4 right here is like saying y triple, not quadruple, prime there. Like four tick marks. But at some point, you've got to stop putting tick marks and uh, indicate which order derivative you're talking about. And that would be here. So this would be a fourth order differential equation because it's two, it's the fourth derivative is involved okay uh, so let's see how many we can fit on one page 13 y equals 3 cosine 2x so we need to take the fourth derivative y prime equals uh, let's see we're going to take the derivative of the cosine which is negative sine the negative sine of 2x, right? Then we're going to have a 3 there, of course. We're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is going to give us a negative 6 sine of 2x. y double prime equals, so the derivative of the sine is the cosine. It's the cosine of 2x. Uh, we're going to multiply by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. We're going to multiply that by negative 6. So we're going to get negative 12. y triple prime equals you can see kind of how this is going. These are kind of switching back and forth. When you take the derivative of cosine, it's going to be negative sine. Multiply that negative out here, you get positive. So it's going to be the sine of 2x. And we're going to have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 2x is 2. So we multiply this by, by 2 and a negative. So we get a positive 24. And y quadruple prime is going to be 48 cosine of 2x. Uh, so is it a solution to this uh, differential equation? Well, here's the quadruple prime, right? So you got 48 cosine 2x minus 16 times just y. I think it probably would help to put the 3 cosine 2x there. So times 3 cosine 2x. Substitute that in. Does it come out to be 0? Let's see. What's 16 times 3 is 48. We get 48 cosine 2x minus 48 cosine 2x, and that is equal to 0. So this is a solution to that differential equation. All right, let's do 14 next. Uh, y equals 3 cosine. Uh, oh, shoot. That was 14 I did. That was 14 I did, so. Wasn't paying good enough attention. Now this is 13. Y equals 3 cosine x. I get the feeling that it's not going to work out because we saw how it worked with uh, the 2 there and how it made this coefficient bigger and bigger and bigger. But when we take the derivative of this one, we just get uh, negative 3 sine x. right? And then there's no inside function to multiply by. So this stays the same. It's not the same. It's, it's negative, but it's still 3. 
And here we're going to have the derivative of this will be negative 3 times the cosine of x, because the derivative of sine is cosine. y triple prime is uh, 3 sine x, and y quadruple prime is 3 cosine x. Right, if we plug that into this differential equation, we will get this is 3 cosine x minus 16 times 3 cosine x. And we get 3 cosine x cosine x minus 48 cosine x. That's negative 45 cosine x, and that is not equal to 0. So this is not a solution to the differential equation. Uh, here I'm going to do a third one on this page. It's going to make this a little smaller and work right here. On 15, 15 and y equals e to the negative 2x. So we start taking the derivative. That's going to be e to the negative 2x right? times negative 2. And y double prime is e to the negative 2x times the derivative of the inside function, the inside function here. Uh, times this is going to give us a positive 4y triple prime. That's going to be e to the negative 2x times 4 times the derivative of the inside. So that's going to bring us to negative 8. Uh, and then uh, y quadruple prime is going to be equal to 16e to the negative 2x. Because right, we got e to the negative 2x is always going to be part of the derivative. And we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. So let's substitute that into this differential equation. 16e to the negative 2x minus 16 times y. y originally was e to the negative 2x. And that does equal 0. So check. Uh, let's bring this over to the next page, because I've run out of room. Sixteen. Y equals five natural log x. This will be interesting. Okay, so y prime equals five times one over x. Y double prime equals. Well, this is five x to the negative one, so we get negative five x to the negative two. Y triple prime equals ten x to the negative three, and. Um, Yep, y quadruple prime would be negative 30x to the negative 4. So let's substitute that in. We've got negative 30x to the negative 4 minus 16 times y, which there's no really way to verify that that would be equal to 0. But if we substitute it in with something that's in terms of x, we have that uh, 16 times 5 natural log x equals 0. Uh, no, this in no way equals 0. Um, no. So that'd be uh, 80 natural log x and negative 30 over x to the fourth. You're not going to subtract, you know, combine these together and get 0. It does not equal, so no. OK, 19, similar kind of an idea y equals x squared, and we're going to see uh, if it's a solution to x, y prime minus 2y equals x cubed e to the x. Okay, so maybe a little bit more creative substitution is going to be required here. Uh, we only need to take about, or worry about taking the first derivative though, so that's, that's a plus. y prime equals 2x. Okay, so we substitute it in for here. Grab a different color. I got x times y prime, which is 2x, minus 2 times y, which I think put in an x squared probably would be helpful. Um, so x times 2x minus 2x squared equals x cubed times e to the x. Well, 2x times x is 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0, and that's not equal to x cubed e to the x, is it? Um, no. I mean, we, all we have to do is give a counterexample, like 1, 1 times e to the 1 would be e 
So not not a solution. Twenty. Y equals x squared e to the x e to the x yeah so y prime equals I gotta use the product rule here so 2x e to the x plus uh, x squared e to the x because e to the x is its own derivative so we plug it in here see if it works uh, y let's see x times y prime which is uh, 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x minus 2 times y, which I'm thinking probably substituting that x squared e to the x would be good, uh, equals x cubed e to the x. You see how there's all these x squareds and cubes and x e to the x's, so I'm thinking if we distribute and distribute and combine and, uh, well not distribute here, but try and combine and see, uh, see what comes out. Okay, so we'll distribute this x, we get 2x squared e to the x plus uh, we've got an x times this guy, that would be x cubed e to the x minus 2x squared e to the x. Well, 2x squared e to the x minus 2x squared e to the x gives us x cubed e to the x, and that does equal x cubed e to the x, so it's a solution check. 21 is y equals x squared times 2 plus e to the x. Alright, uh, so we find y prime. Uh, I actually, I'm going to distribute this x squared so that I get 2x squared plus x squared e to the x. And that way I don't have to do the product rule here. I don't know, it feels easier. So the derivative of 2x squared is 4x to the first plus, and now we have to take the derivative of this, but you know what's interesting is we did that up here. So this is the derivative of this thing, right? Because those parts are the same. So that's convenient. I didn't know that was going to happen. All right. So we take that, we substitute it into here and see what happens. So we get x times y prime, which is 4x plus 2x e to the x uh, plus x squared e to the x minus 2 times y, which I'm thinking we should probably go ahead and let that be this 2x squared plus x squared e to the x does that equal x cubed e to the x right, just making the substitution into this equation um, so let's see I'm going to distribute this x we get 4x squared plus 2x e to the x wrong distributing this x gives me then 2x squared e to the x plus x to the third e to the x minus 2 times 2, that's 4x squared uh, minus 2x squared e to the x. All right, let's see, 4x squared minus 4x squared, those are going to cancel. Uh, 2x squared e to the x, uh, 2x squared e to the x, so those are going to cancel. And so we're just left with x cubed e to the x equals x cubed e to the x, so this also is a solution. Check. Okay. Um, 31. We got y equals c e to the negative 2x uh, y prime plus 2x, oh sorry, 2y. 2y equals 0 and y equals 3 when x equals 0. And this would be the same thing, 0 comma 3. It's just telling you, put in 0, you get out 3. Okay, so we're trying to prove that this is a solution to this differential equation. So we need to plug, we need to find y prime, plug it in, see what happens. So uh, based on this, y prime is equal to, we just got c is just a constant. So c, the constant times the derivative of this, which is e to the negative 2x times the derivative of the inside, which is a negative 2. So negative 2 times c times e to the negative 2x. Okay. So we're going to substitute that in, see what happens. We got negative 2 c e to the negative 2x plus 2 times y, which I'm thinking we should just let y be the original y. c e to the negative 2x equals uh, 0, or it needs to. 
we get 2c e to the negative 2x and 2c e to the negative 2x. This is a negative, this is a positive, they cancel each other out. This works out, so we've verified that this is a solution to that differential equation. Okay, But that's the general, uh, it's just saying that any solution to this differential equation will look like this. Um, so we need to find the particular solution, figure out what c is basically. right? So x is 0, we've got c e to the negative 2 times 0. When we do that, we should get 3 for y. Um, e to the 0 is just 1, so 3 equals c times 1, so c is 3. So the particular solution is y equals 3e to the negative 2x. Okay, so what we've shown here is that any function that looks like this, any function that has a constant times e to the negative 2x, is going to be a solution to this differential equation. We were also told that x is this and y is that, so we plug those into the original equation and figure out what c is, and this is the particular solution. This is the general. That says general, and this is particular particular solution. 34, y equals c1. That is like one constant, some constant. This is another constant. So they're just given these indexes to tell you those are possibly different numbers. They don't have to be the same number. And also, you can't assume that they're the same number. So x, y double prime plus y prime is equal to 0, or so they say. So to do this, we need to find the derivative of, that's going to be easy if you think about it. So we're going to find the derivative of y. y prime equals the derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, Derivative of a constant times the natural log of x is just a constant times the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. So we could look at it as uh, c, that doesn't look good, c2 over x, or c2 times x to the negative 1, whatever works for us, whatever is to our advantage. So y double prime. Let's see, uh, probably c2 times x to the negative 1 is the easiest way to take the derivative. So we get negative times c2 times x to the negative 2. Okay, so we're going to show that it is a solution to this differential equation. Uh, so x times y double prime, negative c2 x to the negative 2, plus y prime, which is... Uh, hmm, say, let's do c2 x to the negative 1. And that needs to be equal to 0. Let's multiply these two together. This is x to the first times x to the negative 2. We add their exponents together. We get negative c2 times x to the negative 1 plus c2 times x to the negative 1. And that does equal 0. So we did what we were supposed to do. All right. Then they give us this other information that uh, y equals 0 when x equals 2, uh, y prime equals 1 half when x equals 2. Now why would they give us two pieces of information? Because there's two variables here, two constants we're trying to figure out. If they just gave us one and we plugged it into the original equation, there's no way you could solve for both of those variables. So what they're doing is giving us uh, basically a system of, of equations. Okay. If we use this one first, look at y prime. y prime only has one variable once you replace x and y, or x and y prime, excuse me. So then we can solve for uh, c2. So I'm going to put it in this version. y prime, which is 1 half, equals c2, which is what we're looking for, times 1 over 2. All right. So we multiply both sides by 2, and we get c2 equals 1. And now we know c2 equals 1. So now uh, y equals c1 plus 1 times the natural log of x. And now we can use x is 2 and y is 0. 0 equals c1 plus the natural log of, of 2. Okay, So c1 equals the negative natural log of 2 if we subtract natural log of 2 on both sides. So the particular solution now with all that information is y equals c1, which is negative natural log of 2, plus c2, which is just 1, times the natural log of x. So negative natural log of 2 plus the natural log of x. You know, we could do, um, we could combine these using those properties of logarithms. If I write it as the natural log of x minus the natural log of 2, I could do the natural log of x over 2. 
Uh, that looks a little better. So there we go. There's a particular solution. Uh, onward to number 38. dy dx equals x cubed minus 4x. So now we're no longer looking, or no, we're no longer trying to prove that something is a solution to a differential equation. We're actually finding the solution to a differential equation, which is uh, pretty simple if you think about it, because what they're saying is that uh, this is a differential equation. The derivative of some function, y, with respect to x, is this. So we need to find that function. Well, if we had a function y, uh, that was a solution. If you took the derivative of this function, dy dx, we should get that. So how do we find that? Well, we're trying to find a function uh, that has this as its derivative, so we're trying to find the antiderivative, right? uh, the antiderivative of x to the third minus 4x dx. Okay. That's what we're going to do. So y equals, take the antiderivative of this, so this is going to be x to the fourth, right? And we need a one-fourth there, so that four times one-fourth gives us that one right there, the one that's in front. Uh, minus this is going to be x squared, and we need this to be a four, so we'll put a two there, so that two times negative two is negative four. Subtract one from the ex exponent, you get x to the first, plus c, okay? So this is the solution to that differential equation. Because if I take the derivative of this, I'm going to get x cubed minus four x. And if I, you know, if I take the derivative of this and I substitute it in for dy dx, they're just going to be the same thing. The ones that we actually have to find the solutions for are much simpler uh, functions than the ones that we're trying to verify are solutions to the differential equations, you know, the ones that we have done so far. 39 as dy dx equals x over 1 plus x squared. All right. And since it's given to us in this kind of cut and dry way, they're saying a, there is a function whose derivative is, the, is such, then the function itself must be the antiderivative of that function. Remember, there's only so many functions we know how to take the antiderivative of, um, like u to the n power, like x to the x to the third, right, or x plus 2 to the third times dx or du, whatever, if we need to use some u substitution, just something to a power times its own derivative, we can do that. We can do the trig functions, a lot of them, sine of u du, cosine, uh, negative sine, negative cosine, tangent, uh, or secant tangent, secant squared. We could even do a tangent and cotangent if we wanted to. Um, we could do those. Um, we can do, uh, what's another one, e to the u du. If you can get it written as e to some power times a derivative of that power, we can take the antiderivative being e to the u plus c. Right? And this would be uh, u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Um, and then you know the, the trig functions have their own derivatives, which you're familiar with. And then how about du over u? Um, well, that would just be the natural log of u, the absolute value of u, plus c, plus c, plus c, of course. So how do we get this to look like one of those? Uh, we look at it for a while, and hopefully we are experienced enough by now to see that this function, if you take the derivative of it, you get x dx, or you, get, you actually get 2x dx, right? So if I put a 2 there then I would have, this guy down here would be u. And if I take the derivative of u, derivative of 1 plus x squared, the derivative would be 2x dx. Okay, so I'll put a 1 half out here. All right, we're using u substitution, we're using the natural log here. So we got 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of u, which is 1 plus x squared, plus c. All right, so the solution to this differential equation has to look like this. And they don't tell us what x and y are at any time. So we just have to give the general solution. Uh, 40, number 40. dy dx equals uh, e to the x over 1 
plus e to the x. So since it's just given, dy dx, some fun function has a derivative, that is e to the x over 1 plus e to the x. Then the function we're looking for must be the antiderivative of the function we're given, since we're given the derivative of the function we're looking for. How do we make this work? Well, if you notice again, this guy down here, if you let it be u, and you take the derivative of it, you get this. Because the derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and this is du. So this is du over u, which gives us the natural log of the absolute value of u. u is 1 plus e to the x. We didn't even need to multiply by 1 half or anything like that. Um, plus c. And actually, to think about e to the x, is always going to be positive. So 1 plus an always positive number will be, never be negative, so there's no need for the absolute value. Let's see. That's the solution. That's the general solution to that differential equation. So, so far, finding the solutions to differential equations looks a lot like taking the antiderivative. OK, so again. It's only so convenient because they just tell us dy dx equals something. So to find y, we must have to go backwards and find the antiderivative. Not all differential equations are that easy, but that's for later. So the antiderivative of sine of 2x, let's see, we can just kind of piece this together here. I know if I take the, the antiderivative, it's going to be a cosine. But then again, the cosine of 2x, the derivative of the cosine is a negative. So then put a negative so that when I get negative negative sign and it's negative then it comes out positive um, also when I take the derivative of this I'm gonna have to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inside which means uh, I'll make this a negative one half okay so the negative is going to make the negative sign positive the one half is going to combat the two when we do the chain rule and we're just gonna get a one plus C um, yep that's it that's the solution. That's the general solution to that differential equation. 45. Um, dy dx equals x times the square root of x minus 3. And I put a little note up on the board that says to let u equal x minus 3, and then therefore x equals u plus 3. Let's see why I would do that. y equals the antiderivative of x root x minus 3 dx. Well, if I let u be x minus 3, then I could rewrite this as uh, you know, the square root of u instead of x minus 3. And then x itself would be u plus 3. u plus 3 times the square root of u. Okay, And du is equal to the derivative of this, and the derivative of this would just be dx. 1 dx. So dx can re be replaced by du. Okay, the advantage of this is we can write it as u plus 3 times u to the 1 half du. We can distribute that u to the 1 half. Um, we get u to the 3 halves plus 3u to the 1 half du. And now we can just use the power rule. So we add 1 to this power, we get u to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves, or times 2 fifths, plus 3, no, not 3. Uh, so u to the 3 halves. Uh, we want to wind up with a 3 here, so like we could put 2. So when we multiply by 3 halves, the 2's cancel, and we wind up with a 3, uh, plus c. And then we just substitute u we substitute what u is back in, and u is x minus 3. So 2 fifths times x minus 3 to the 5 halves plus 2 times u, which is x minus 3, to the 3 halves plus c. That plus c looks like it's maybe in the exponent, which is not. It's right there. There it is, kind of nutty. Um, number 50, dy dx equals x minus y. 
Okay, so some function's derivative is x minus y. Now this has to do with slope fields, and I'm going to draw a really crude version of this slope field that uh, you feel free to look in your book to see what it actually looks like. But uh, you know, it looks like a bunch of slopes like this through here, and some slopes like this, and you know, it looks like this. Exaggerated curve, and then something like these. Something like that. Please look at your book and see what this looks like exactly. Then it gives us this table and asks us to fill it in, basically, is what it asks. Okay, so x and y and dy dx. x is negative 4, negative 2, uh, 0 to 48. And y is 2, 0, 4, 4, 6, 8. And we're supposed to figure out what dy dx is. If they tell us x and y, we can just plug them in there, right? Um, so dy dx equals. Uh, for this value, negative 4 minus 2, x minus y, so negative 6. So if you look at your much better looking graph in your book, and you go to negative 4 comma 2, negative 4 comma 2, uh, you look at the slope of that slanty thing, uh, that just that little tick mark, it's going to be pretty steep in the negative direction, pretty believable as a slope of negative 6, right? Up 6 and over 1. That's what that... That, that little slant should look like it's a piece of a line, a line that has a slope of negative 6. Uh, this guy here, we got negative 2 minus 0, so negative 2. If you go to negative 2, 0, right here on the x-axis at negative 2, it looks like this guy has a slope of negative 2, up 2 and over 1. Um, yeah. yeah, it does. Um, then we got 0 minus 4, negative 4. The slope at 0, comma 4 should look like negative 4. The slope at 2, 4 should look like 2 minus 4, negative 2. The slope at 4, 6, 4, 6 should look like 4 minus 6, negative 2. And 8 minus 8, we should have a slope of 0 at 8, 8. So if you go to 8, 8, we should see a slope of 0, uh, which looking at mine, I see 1. Yeah, it looks like a slope of 0 right there. All right, um, 53 through 56. Um, so you're going to have to have your book out for sure for this one, because I'm not going to try and draw all these. dy dx equals cosine of 2x. So we've got to figure out which of these slope fields uh, is the slope field for this differential equation. OK, now just let me run you through again what all this means. This is the derivative. Remember that the derivative, if the derivative gives you a number, an output, that output represents the slope, the slope of the tangent line of the function at that point. The slope of, of what? Of, of, of what tangent line to what function? To the function y, right? So there's this function y, and this is its derivative. This derivative tells you the slope of y. And so if you look at the slope field, the slope field tells you the slope of this function at any x comma y, OK? Now, this particular differential equation only has x in it. Right, the previous one we just looked at it was x minus y, but this one's just uh, cosine of 2x. So all I have to do is plug in x 